Hi everybody, I hope you're all well. I'm trying to keep up with the American midterm elections on my phone as my laptop developed some problem yesterday and some of my software disappeared. What angered me is that I paid for the software and paid quite a bit as I chose the family option. Yet, when I wanted to reload it, it wanted me to pay again. No, 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 no. You can't upgrade your software and in the process not add all of the applications that the previous one had and then expect me to pay again. <laughs> no, no, no. They can sod off. So now I have finally managed to get everything up and running again, but my videos will look slightly different. But what the heck, a change is as good as a holiday. Okay, because I struggled so long with the laptop yesterday, this morning I did not have the time to make notes in order to continue with Mr. Bao's receipt. So today we'll have a random chat about a variety of issues and I will address some of your questions. So what do I think of Megan voting and posting a picture of herself wearing a sticker to show that she voted and wearing an Archwell cap? Well, as an American citizen, she is legally allowed and within her right to vote. As she is still on the royal website, however, and still holds the title of a royal duchess, which, by the way, is an honorary royal title and not a peerage title, she is, as a British royal, now actually interfering in foreign politics. I know the sugars will not understand the concept, but there is a very good reason why this is not allowed and should not be palatable to any American or anyone else in any other country. In short, it is all about divided loyalties and political transparency. We are obviously all of the opinion that Meghan's goal is to destroy the monarchy. But what if we are all wrong? What if she is somewhat of a double agent? <laughs> now, I know it sounds absolutely ridiculous. But remember, we are not only talking about Meghan here. Meghan may indeed be setting a trend or a precedent for others in the future. In my opinion, this is even more reason why King Charles should start the process to strip Harry and Meghan of their titles sooner rather than later. Yes, but what if it is true that they will be divorced in the next year or so. What about Harry then? Well, the thing is that should they be divorced while Harry is still Duke of Sussex, Meghan will get to keep the title until the day she dies or until she remarries. So, there is that. We will have to hear about Meghan, Duchess of Sussex, forever. It will be slightly different when it comes to the princess thing, though. Remember, Meghan does not hold any of her titles by herself or in her own right. So, to explain it further, Diana was married to the first in line to the throne, and therefore, while married, she was formally addressed as her Royal Highness, the Princess of Wales. After her divorce, she lost the HRH and became simply Diana, Princess of Wales. Sarah York was never addressed 
as Princess Sarah. But instead, like Meghan now, she was Her Royal Highness, the Duchess of York, a princess of Great Britain. The a princess of Great Britain being what you may all understand as a job title. After her divorce from Andrew, she became Sarah, Duchess of York, and can no longer state her occupation as a princess of Great Britain. The same would apply to Meghan. Although they are not allowed to use the HRH styling now, they have not as yet been stripped of it. So technically, Meghan currently is Her Royal Highness the Duchess of Sussex, a princess of Great Britain. Should they divorce, she will become Meghan, Duchess of Sussex, and nothing further. Should Harry's dukedom be taken before they divorce, Meghan will become plain old Rachel Meghan Markle again. Anyway, I was also asked what I thought of the young man who tried to pelt King Charles with eggs. Well, I think it was just plain silly and stupid. Firstly, his reason for doing so is plain stupid. Neither King Charles nor his mother were involved or in any way responsible for slavery in any shape or form. He may be king, but he can't turn back the clock. So what is the point? As a matter of fact, I get highly irritable when I read things like, the king wants an open dialogue about slavery. Just stop it. Stop talking. Stop this victimhood mentality. Stop using things which happened more than a hundred years ago as an excuse for everything which is going wrong now. Yes, as a result of the past, people were marginalized and held back from reaching their potential. So, instead of talking, do something quietly to erase the things which were in place to hold those people back, build schools, educate, uplift, build hospitals, heal and fix, build homes to protect and uplift, but stop talking. Anyway, even if the young man was protesting something else, like the 25% of the Crown Estate income going to the King as sovereign grant, there would be better ways of doing it. Write letters to your government, speak to your MP, write to your MP, or make an appointment to go see him. To throw eggs at someone like King Charles is not only juvenile, but it is also useless. Did he look at all bothered? No, he didn't. Because had he been hit, he would have been whisked away and in a brand new suit in five minutes because he can afford it. Well, this young man could not even aim properly, so he made an even bigger fool of himself and only riled up the people to chant, God save the king, lavishing the king with praise and positivity, which they may otherwise not have done, or at least not so loudly. And the king just shrugged it off and carried on. The young man will now likely be charged with anything from assault or even a public disorder offence. Okay, so that is what I thought about that. Let's quickly address some gossip and note it is gossip. 
and nothing more. I don't know this for a fact. I heard it from someone who heard it from someone else. Anyway, allegedly, as of the day before yesterday, Harry is still not home. He may have been back to or in Montecito as far as anyone knows because Rachel told someone she had to go meet her husband. Now I don't know the circumstances under which she said it and nor does my source. I know Lady C said that Harry did not go to Portugal to spend time with Eugenie. But my source said her source told her that she got the impression that Harry had been or may even still be out of the country. But listen guys, I got an idea. Note, it is just my own theory. Could Harry have gone back to Britain and could it have something to do with the Queen's will. What if his grandmother left Harry something in her will? Surely he will have to be there to make arrangements, sign documents and so forth. Could it be possible? What do you think? Okay guys, so let me go. We are busy with year-end exams, have an upcoming Christmas market, so my household is currently a busy one with boxes and books and papers all over the place. <laughs> now please, please, please take good care of yourselves until we meet again on the next video. Bye!